So there are two main reasons for it. One is that as a child growing up in India, uh, I know the war reasonably well. I was 10 years old, so I have vivid memories of newspaper accounts of that. I, have, I remember pasting black paper on windows to make sure that you know, the enemy aircraft would not spot the big city Bombay at that time. And when I, very tentatively, you, you must remember, I was a 24-year-old kid at that time when I met him, and he was a man in his 30s or 40s. And I asked him that, you know, you have had this, uh, there are these reports I hear that you had a role to play in this conflict. And my, my, my question is that, did you really have a role? And were you involved with it? Before I could complete my long-winded sentence, he stopped me mid-sentence. Of course we killed him. We had to do that. We had to do that because he was a, an interruption. He was blocking democracy. He was getting in the way of our system. And therefore, we had to take this action. And so he was completely unrepentant at that time and stayed that way for the rest of the period. One is it reminds a younger generation of Indians of something good India did in foreign policy terms, that it took a decision to act on a moral impulse because something was horribly going wrong and intervened and acted to protect innocent lives and not with any other ulterior motive. Now, there are people who will tell you that India went in essentially to carve out Pakistan and destroy the country, but that's wisdom after. India did not rig the elections in Bangladesh. It's Pakistan which chose to rig the elections. It's Pakistan which unleashed the violence there. And it's Pakistan which created the crisis which led to the refugees. So Indian, if, if India had a grand aim, you're giving India too much credit for that. India did none of that. In, the situation was thrust upon itself and Indira Gandhi played her cards very, very well. So that's one reason why it is important. And the other is also in a way to remind all of us in India that there is some, there are ways in which army can act in a particular manner. Now, people from Kashmir and Assam and Irom Sharmila's story show that, that there's a tremendous outpouring of anger against the Armed Forces Special Powers Act. And there are people in army who feel that there's no need for it. And look at how India handled the situation there. And look at how Indian army behaved there. You know, one of the things I was told was by my editors and others, please see if Indian army has behaved badly. And if it has, don't spare them. So I did ask, you know, when people told me that our women were raped, I said, who raped them? They were the Pakistani soldiers, Razakars, Al Badr, Al Shram. I said, did Indian army behave badly? No, no, no. They actually stopped the violence. So there was something the Indian army had got it right at that time. And again, the yeah, earlier question, who was the head of the army at that time? A Parsi guy. Who was the number two, a Sikh in that war? Number two and a half or three was a Jewish soldier. You know, I'm talking about Maneksha, Jagjit Singh Arora and General Jacob. None of them was a Hindu, they were all Indians. So I think there are ways in which India knew how to get it right. And I think this, this war shows a very good example of that.